So if we're ready to go, let's get started. Oh, do we have, I, I know you need to get to bed and all this stuff. Uh, are you, uh, you have, is three hours okay for this? <laughs> It's been a long week, right? Are you ready to wind down? Why not? It's time for the Wine Time Fridays podcast with Shelly and Phil. Neither are sommeliers, but both have a deep passion for life, each other, and of course, delicious wine. And now, here to talk about this week over a glass of wine is Shelly and Phil. It's wine time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wine Time Fridays with Shelly and Phil on this Friday, November 24th, episode 188. By the way, today is Carmen Year Day. Yeah. Um, and we only have five more episodes this year. Hard to believe. It's yeah. really hard to believe. Shelly, happy Friday. It's wine time. Happy Friday. Shelly always feels so silly with people that don't know about the wine bill. <laughs> um, and our listeners are very well versed uh, on the fact that we were on 10 acres and worked really hard. And at the end of the day, with her very soft voice, um, she's like, wine time, wine time. <laughs> and I couldn't hear. So we got a wine bell that's on the house to this day uh-huh. that when we're in the yard gets rang. But now we have our little cute wine bell, which is one of the monikers of our Wine Time Fridays podcast. Today, yeah. we have another guest. What? Oh, I was just going to say, this is from Salvation Army, where we're going to... Did we already ring bells? Nope. Oh. <laughs> it's in December. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I want to say it's December 7th, I think. Oh. I think. We're going to be ringing the bells for the Salvation Army. And we'll like talk Army. all about that next week when we get to regroup. It'll be the first time in uh, a long time without a guest. And so kind mm-hmm. of regroup, but... Speaking of, we have a guest today. We have from Iola Wines, we have Marilee Bramhall. And uh, Marilee, welcome to Wine Time Fridays. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's great to be here with you. So Marilee resides in the Seattle area. And so that would make perfect sense that we are recording this while she's in New York and we're in <laughs> Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. That does make perfect sense. So, uh, Marilee, why don't you tell the listeners, because this is basically a couple of weeks ago that you're there, but why were you in New York while I'm I, opening our first bottle of wine? Oh, excellent. Yeah, you get going on that. And I will tell you, I've been in New York this week for um, a week-long event called New York Champagne Week. And oh. they celebrated their um, 10th anniversary this year of New York Champagne Week. So I was here for specifically for the Wednesday night event, which was focused on um, really it's women in champagne. And so it was an event all about Iola wines. And um, we poured five, five of our... Um, beautiful champagnes that was really wonderful and um got to share the stories of wine growers and the women wine growers and champagne that we work with and hear a lot of people raving about the champagne that was really exciting so the events gone on all week each night there's a different event and um last night was the last night thank goodness because i couldn't do another night (laughs) you know uh be careful what you wish for (laughs) And don't right. speak those words too loudly. And then the wine gets taken away. And that's no good at all. No, that is no good. So Marilee, uh packed two thirds of the wines that Shelly and I will be uh, tasting tonight. Uh, but she's going to be tasting, I believe, the first two, if I'm not mistaken. That's uh, right. Is that mm-hmm. right? Okay. So the first one is a 2021. There we go. Actually, I'm going to do it this way because I know where the where the words are going to go from now on they're going right there this is a 2021 matto white filo divino did i say that right that's the producer yes beautiful uh, this is a white blend no this is 100 percent verdicchio this is 100 percent verdicchio not yeah. a white blend uh for those of us who didn't do the research there should have you know Oh, you don't have to do any research. That's what you got me for. That's what I'm saying. Uh, and this <laughs> yeah. is a beautiful, beautiful time of the episode when our dog just went into her kennel. Uh, Shelly, you have your glass, Marilee? I do. Beautiful. To health, wealth, and abundance, gratitude, romance, and 
Peace on earth. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> nice. I like it. Mm. Oh, this is delightful. It is. Um, mm -hmm. tell, tell us a little bit about the Verdicchio. Okay. I would love to tell you about Verdicchio. Yeah. So Verdicchio is um, like quite a few Italian white wasn't. It's native to Italy, to the Marche region of Italy, which is on the Adriatic coast and about the central part of the boot. Um, oh, it's got such great acidity on the finish there. My mouth's watering. Um, it's almost a little effervescent, slightly, mm -hmm, slightly tiny awesome. bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a golden color. Really nice. Is it on oak at all? This no, this interesting. One is, that, this one is not no. And what I love about Verdicchio is that it's one of several white grapes that um, has potential for long aging. And the you know as you this is a superiore, and, and as you get into reservas, there you know there's quite wonderful potential for long aging and evolution of these wines. So Verdicchio is, you know, we know it goes back to about something like the 14th century. So it's been uh, cultivated for a long time. And um, there's a great story about this producer and, you know, kind of how they, how they started and the woman that is actually making these um, wines as well and what their philosophies are in the vineyard as well as the cellar. It's pretty interesting. Um, yeah. So, and who um, is this woman winemaker? What is her name? Her, her name is Ginevra Esposito. And this is actually one of only two producers I work with where it's a family that owns the, the winery, the estate, the vineyard and cellar. Um, but they've hired someone externally to come in and, and do all of their analogy and winemaking for them. So oh, the wow. family, I mean, I, the family is actually, they are um, originally from Milan. They and re were in the textile business. They retired from the textile business and wanted to have a wine adventure. Like so many, so many of us, <laughs> they were craving mm -hmm. a wine adventure in their life. Um, so they, they went looking all over, really all over the country. And when they got to where Filo Divino is now, and it's very close to the Adriatic. The Marque is an interesting region because of the fact that it's very hilly. You don't have a whole, I mean, it's like mount, mountainous. Italy is a lot more mountainous than most people realize. Mm. And the Marque in particular is one where you, you almost go from basically a hill right to the beach. There's not a lot of, um, you know, plains, let's put it that way. Um, so Filo Divino is located in, in a place where it's very close to the Adriatic. You can look out and see the, the Adriatic Sea from, from the vineyards and um, beautiful rolling hills. And when, um, when they saw this property, it was, had been abandoned. And there were quite a few um, very old vines of Verdicchio. And what they, their, their passion really is to cultivate um, native grape varieties, native mm -hmm. Italian grape varieties. Sorry. That's okay. No, you got to see what's going to work. We got a little screen and it cut me off. I am listening because this is, it is pronounced Marche though, right? It's M-A-R-C-H-E. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the Marche is where, um, Verdicchio is native to, and you know, it's like I said, been grown for a few hundred years now, several hundred years since about we think the 14th century. Um, and it's, I, I'm a big fan of this wine, I'm a big fan of Ginevra. Um, she's got wonderful ideas for how she, I mean, they have done a great thing in hiring her because she came from Tuscany. She's been working with Sangiovese for a long time and that's a great, she's got a lot of passion for. So yeah. this is an adjustment to move to different grapes and specifically to working with the white grape. Um, this one is not an indigenous yeast fermentation, but she is um, all about indigenous yeast fermentations. So I, my, my, uh, I, I'm, I suspect that in an, you know, another vintage or two, she will have the owners um, feeling comfortable enough to take the risk of allowing her to do an indigenous yeast fermentation. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about her and her energy and, you know, 
in the vineyard, some of the things she's doing, uh, lots of following biodynamic uh, practices, even though they have not pursued certification, they're certified organic in the EU. Um, but in the vineyard, she's doing things like, you know, she's using daikon uh, for cover crops as well as mustard and daikon specifically because it has a good ability to open up the soil and help to aerate the soil that way. So, um, and then, you know, low, low, low intervention as much as possible. Um, some of her other cuvées, she's doing some things with Amphora that is, you know, they're really interesting. I hope to have some of those, some of that Verdicchio in the future. It's it's exciting and um, it's even more exciting than this one. So have, you, you got to stop me, jump in and stop. Oh, me. I'm, I'm going to have so many there. comments, but I tend to step all over Shelly. So do you have anything? Because I have lots. Well, before we go on to any other wines or anything, we should learn more about Iola wines in general. Well, what you're sure. doing with <laughs> I, I want to I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about the food pairings on this mm -hmm. uh, and, and the cover crops. I, I'm I'm loving that. Yeah. You know, uh, again, wine is starts in the farm. <laughs> it does. I mean, so, yeah, the best yeah. wine starts in the vineyard, and, yeah. and and wine is food, and it's easy for a lot of people, I think, to forget that wine actually this is food, and so in the same way that we're you know, want to be conscientious about how we grow our produce. It's for me, it's the same thing with wine. I, I want it to be grown and made as naturally as possible. We, yes. we were watching because we wrapped up our Apostle Robles uh, uh, series a couple of weeks ago, but we watched it again recently because of our trip there. We wanted to kind of Tin City. Yeah. Tin City, the documentary. And you said something and I know this is wrong because I just had it dictate off the video, but it's basically what you said. Wine is everything. Food, it's the weather outside. It's where the vineyard is planted. It's science. Um, all of the above. And I just love that. My comment on your Iola Wines website is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, during the course of your uh, telling us about this, I have the in our notes on my end i have the link to this wine and it's got everything you'd ever want to know including food pairings like yeah. charcuterie including serrano ham cured salami the list is large and yeah. large grilled <laughs> tuna and salmon um, yeah i mean it's written mozzarella and do you pronounce that camembert yes how about that mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. some right. French cheese, sort of yeah. like a brie. It's really but not good. Quiet. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, anyway, I wanted to compliment you on the website. Uh, Thank you. Because I, I really believe that once you built that, then you just start uh, replacing it as the, the information gets updated. Mm -hmm. And I just thank you so much for that because so many wineries uh, kind of their website is their Facebook page, which makes really yeah. no sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to say about each wine and um, thank you for this feedback. I really appreciate it um, because I take pains over it, <laughs> over this and the same, sure. same thing for the, the um, inserts that I write for our um, club allocations. I spend a lot of time writing those inserts so that when people open up the box and they open up the insert, there's you know, not only a tasting note and food pairings, but there's information about the grape, if it's maybe a, a native grape Mm -hmm. Oh, and you're looking at the tissue paper. Yes. Did what a like, nice like little tissue. I he love does. the nice little touches on the on this mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, I think it was today or yesterday because I've had this tissue on the table and Shelly is like going to pick it up and throw it away. I'm going, no, no, no. That's my reminder to and mention this. And then recycled them. And recycled them. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and you know what? That, that tissue paper is recyclable and compostable. So you can nice. compost oh, that tissue paper. Our compost yes. uh, bin will love this. We'll yes. compost. Now, yeah, yeah. you can do that Shelley's... for, there's some other people that save it and they use it to wrap gifts. Yeah, um, I guess I was a little rough on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going to wrap any gifts. Uh, I, I get excited when wine comes, Merrily. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> um, no, back to Shelly's. to rip it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Shelly's question. I'm going to go ahead and have a little bit more of this. Uh, our Friday might be done right now for me work-wise. Uh, uh, back to Shelly's question about Iola Wines. 
And yeah. and what what kind of inspired you to get this going? Because you are a sommelier. Uh, yeah. So I'm not a certified som. I've been up through the W set side of things. Um, so and I'm I've become an educator. So I've you know done the wine scholar guild programs for French wine scholar and Italian wine scholar, and I'm credentialed to teach French wine scholar. And then I do a lot of um, master classes for um, private client master classes. Um, how did Iola start? Well, um, there's a kind of a longer story and a shorter story. So I'll try to keep it concise as possible. You know, like we all have a, we all have a journey, right? Sure. Um, that takes many twists and turns along the way. Um, I started importing back in 2017. And at that point I was selling wholesale and I had just a, a small book of wines and a small book of customers in Seattle. And I was looking at, you know, how to, how to grow. And I had a lot of um, friends and family members asking repeatedly, well, can I just buy some of the wine from you? And I, I said, no, you know, I'm not, I don't have that kind of license. So no, I can only sell the restaurants and, and, you know, small retail. That's and primarily what I did with restaurants. So in, in 2020, um, February or so, I had about six pallets of wine arrive from um, France and Italy. And from the beginning, it's always been women producers and it's always been organic, sustainable, biodynamic um, viticulture. So um, all this wine arrived in February 2020. And then um, we all know what happened in March of 2020. March something, 15th. something else arrived in 2020 <laughs> around that time. Yeah. Yeah. So we went into lockdown. And um, you know what? In that, it, it's funny when it's so easy now that we're kind of on the other side of that to, I think, forget what that feeling of absolute uncertainty was in March of 2020. You know, no one had any idea what was going to happen. It was, things felt very uncertain. And um, so it felt very uncertain for my, all my restaurant clients. I lost all my customers in one day, March 15th of 2020, all of a sudden I had no customers and no legal way to sell all the wine that I had. Uh, I'd been thinking, all these people have been asking, how you know, can I just buy the wine? So I've been thinking about, well, could I start a wine club? I wonder if that would work. Would people even be interested? Maybe what I should do is just build a small little website and see, you know, is this going to go anywhere? He's and sorry, pardon? I'm, I'm. He's jiggling I'm, the camera. I'm nodding, oh. but I'm leaning on my arms, and the camera's going like this. <laughs> oh, okay. I did not notice. So, um, I'm probably caught up in the story here. So, yeah, so I, I, you know, built my own goofy little website. I basically did everything. I, I used to say I was the chief everything officer. I did all my accounting and bookkeeping, which I didn't know how to do. I had to learn how to do that. I built a, you know, a funny little website because I didn't want to invest a lot of money if it sure. wasn't going to be something that people were interested in. Yep. So what happened was it was um, a lot of customers. My customers are women. And women have this thing where when they find something good, something cool, they like to share it with their friends. So this was women, um, friends telling friends, telling friends. And then eventually um, my husband was, he, he sat up and took notice of what I was doing and said, um, I think you're onto something, you know, maybe we should really work on developing this business and expanding it. So that's what's happened. It's, it took, a, uh, you know, I sold all that wine um, that I had at the beginning and um and then it took some time to actually do the branding and that was quite a um fascinating process to get us a look that really tells a story about who we are as a brand and then um building a new website and um getting licenses to ship to other states and you know that's all these infrastructure pieces that take some time not to mention the sourcing of all the wine. So now I'm um, working with about 40 different producers between France and Italy. And I like to tell people I'm, um, I'm part wine importer and part wine detective because <laughs> it, it takes some time to find these wines. And, and because I only work with um, women owned and or women made um, mm -hmm. that, you know, further reduces the options for producers I could be working with and wines that I, I could be buying. So, um, so that's, that's the, that's the short story. And you say that you all, you actually go out into the vineyards with the winemaker. Yeah, I do. Make sure that everything is aligned. 
hundred percent. Yeah. If, if you, um, if you have a bottle of Iola wines, then that means I've been there. Yeah. That's okay. fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, that is. So it's a great time to mention that we now have our wine time Friday series page mm -hmm. and uh, front and center is women in wine. Why is that important? Because like still the vast majority of wine that's made in the world are, are male winemakers. But yeah. What's the percentage of wine purchased, purchased. by women? Yes. I mean, yeah. So basically we're looking at about 15, to, it's only about 15 or 20% of, of winemakers worldwide are women. Um, and and yeah. to your point, that's, we're not even talking about the volume of wine made. If we looked at like, you know, on a per liter basis, how, right. how, how much is made by men versus women, women are even, you know, less represented sure. on the flip side. Women are the ones that purchase wine. I mean, we know it's up to 80%. Some stats say up to 85% of wine purchases are made by women in America. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, Isn't uh, it? And it's yeah. fascinating when I when I do, um, well, I mean, I, I said this to a, a, the group here earlier this week at Champagne Week. You know, when I, when I shared that stat, there's, I just see the room, look around the room, all the jaws are dropping. And I, you know, and I, I t when I share this stat with people, then the next question is, well, how do I, how do I find wines that are made by women? And I, I was like, well, that's why I started Iola. You start, you start <laughs> I mean, I Iola, you when you get them. through the Iola wines, then you can look elsewhere, but you've got 40 at least to go with yep. times how many wines those producers are making. And it made perfect sense what you said that um, wine and vineyards were handed down from Father to son, not father to daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's starting to change. Um, but I, I'm a firm believer that the way to see this change is to, for us to continue asking for wine that's made by women. I think that's the only way it's going to change. Um, and it's interesting, you know, there's, there's several producers I work with where it, there's daughters working with a father who's approaching retirement and, you know, going to be leaving. And there's, there's different stories. You know, there's many of these fathers that are absolutely so proud of their daughters and just, and it's just, it's so just wonderful to, to, to see how proud um, these fathers are of their daughters and, and what they're, what they're doing um, and how they're innovating really. Um, how they're thinking differently and changing things like, you know, what they're doing in the vineyard different, differently, thinking about being organic. A lot of times that are, the organic conversion process happens because of a woman. Oftentimes well, that is that. a great segue as yeah. we go into a break to hear from Elsom Sellers and Jody Elsom. Mm -hmm. Oh, another woman in wine. <laughs> and when we come back, we're going to get into a rosé and maybe talk a little bit about the differences of how men and women drink wine, taste wine, and the differences when we come back with Merle Bramhall. You know, this Sperdicchio is really, really good with celery. Celery? Is that what you're having yeah. it with? <laughs> uh, not right now. No, I... I I ran across that pairing um, on accident a few weeks ago, last month sometime. And that's when I started thinking, oh, this is going to be so good with stuffing on Thanksgiving. It's just going to be incredible. Can't wait. Yeah. I, 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 this has got so many, so many options. Um, uh -huh. Welcome back to Wine Time Fridays. You caught us in the middle of a, of a conversation while we were hearing from Jody Elsom and, uh, and all of that. Uh, great wine that they're producing over at Elsom Cellars. By the way, Mary Lee, have you been down to Elsom Cellars uh, down there in the Soto District? I have not. They're an industrial winery. Jody is awesome. They're making great, great juice. And uh, they're just a hop skip from downtown Seattle. Well, I need to pay a visit, it sounds like. Yep. Do. I, don't, I don't get out enough. I will say I spend too much time working. Yeah. I think we all can can maybe relate to that, mm -hmm. um, which is a nice way to remind us to reset and uh, go back to that balance of life. 
However, if you like what you're doing, then is it really work? That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. I have my moments. So uh, when we last talked, before we went to break, I said something about um, kind of how men and women approach wine differently. Um, and Joe, um, we're going to get that kind of explanation from Mary Lee as we pour this 20, oh, where are they? 2022 Valtanesi del Garda Chirietto. Okay. Oh, this is going to be fun. Did um, I say it right? It's Valtanesi and, and it's Chiretto. So I said it so, so, so wrong. <laughs> well, do you know what, Phil? I said it wrong for a long time, and I was trained by the woman that makes this wine. Well, I will say. Her name's, right? her name's Giovanna. And Giovanna. She's very, she's very particular about everything, right down to these bottles, which she designed herself. They're pretty, yeah. This yeah. is yeah, this is fantastic artwork. Yeah, it, it is. It's a great bottle to save just to use as a water carafe or something, um, because it's so just they're so pretty. Uh, yeah. And she designed her labels as well. Yeah. So the first one that we had, the Radicchio, $26.50 a bottle. Yeah. This uh rose, $26.50 a bottle. Uh hashtag cheersing. 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 Cheers. Oh, it looks beautiful in your glass, too. Doesn't it? It's beautiful. And it smells beautiful. And this is such a unique wine. I won't get started talking about it until you want me to do that, though. Well, I want to know about the differences, uh, how men and women approach wine. And then oh, that's we need right. to dive into this, for sure. Yeah. Oh, there's so wow. much to say about this wine. So, But let's talk about men and women, how they yeah. approach wine differently. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah, so a lot of times um, men s seem to be focused on the their wine purchases are um, what a lot of people call vanity bottles. You know, mm. they want to, they're buying a wine to, that, impress. to impress. Well said. That's very well said. It's it sounds a lot more diplomatic than how I probably would have. I would have said it in a very awkward <laughs> way. So <laughs> they, buy, they buy wines generally to impress, whereas women don't typically think about it that way they're oftentimes they're looking for um they have something in mind that maybe they want a rosé they might be thinking about um a dinner that they're making if they're entertaining and having company for dinner or if it's holiday time and they're thinking about wines to go with you know recipes that they're making or they are you know i think that women tend to think of wine more as it's about togetherness and fun um sometimes you know all of us just want a wine that's um easy accessible to easy yeah. to drink pleasant you know i mean i always, i always say to people when i'm teaching master classes you know we no longer live in the era where uh we're drinking wine because it's safer to drink than the water that's this true ser serves no pleasure other uh, serves no purpose other than your pleasure so right. if it's not giving you pleasure then dump it in the dump bucket and let's find something uh -huh. that is really really enjoyable yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the big difference between how men and women approach is men are oftentimes buying to impress and women are thinking about it in a, not at all that way. I think I've noticed that women are very interested in the stories behind the bottles. They want to know about where did it come from and who made it. And, you know, and we're getting, I think, especially, you know, the generations that are coming after me are, they're focused on where their food comes from. They want to understand that. And I think that's catching on, you know, that, that, um, from farm perspective. to table. From farm yeah. to table. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That mm -hmm. seems to be a lost art these days. Uh, and I hope we get back to that one moment. Lucy. No. Nope. It's enough. <laughs> so see. they'll see that on YouTube. Uh, here's one of the things I wanted to mention about that. Uh, you know, here at Wine Time Fridays, our goal early on was to cut into our wine budget, which it's worked. OK, <laughs> mm -hmm. number two, and it quickly became this, is to help educate with the stories mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. so many of our listeners are on the front end of their wine journey. But try to find those what I like, you know, Trevor, the Q, the QPR uh, wines, the quality 
to price ratio that get that quality. I mean, I'm sorry, this is under 30 bucks for um, an outstanding rosé. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's off the charts. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are wines out there. It is our uh, uh, target is to try to find those and get that stuff to our, you know, the different wines to our listeners. And but, so in this case, our listeners can go to the website. Yeah. To find these and, and by the way, in the show notes has uh, every, every one of these wines, you will have a link to these wines as well as the whole Iola uh, portfolio. But I will tell you this, Marilee. Yes. So we are, our, our house white has been for almost years now, the J. Lore Chardonnay. Okay. Okay. It's a, it, it always delivers. It's inexpensive. I, we don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we're involved in the Gary V wine club. So you get, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere between hundred and 130. Uh, I would be surprised if he wasn't at that event this week. Uh, you get hundred, $130 worth of wine for $60. Okay. That's fantastic. And it's all over the place. And there was a $60 Chardonnay from Napa that came in and I, went blind with Shelly nice. for them, right? And yeah. she immediately recognized the J-Lore okay. and said, this other one is is really good, but is it is it $50 better? Yeah, so that's the question, right? That's, yeah, is it $50 better? Mm -hmm. Is Opus One at three three fifty? Is that is that $300 better than a $50 red blend from... Walla Walla or Italy or even Bordeaux, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's and there's th there's just some incredible wines um coming. I mean, I come across incredible wines that I feel like, wow, um, when I taste it and I look at the price point where I have it, I always want people to taste it and feel like they would have been actually okay with paying more. Yeah. For it. Yep. This is usually that's what I'm going for, is I want people to feel like it's worth more than what they paid for it last week we had jesse on with trevino also an importer it's kind of like two weeks in a row we're Import. we're um away from the u.s wines and we have importers on but those uh out of south africa super value driven uh, uh -huh. you know and it's just yeah. those are the little gems by the way at some point it's going to hit the tipping point and they're going to it's like washington yeah. wines have yes. been so value driven yeah. uh, versus like California wines, but now right. they're starting to get spendy. It's going to force mm -hmm. California wines down to all balance out because the market is, you know, wine is market driven like anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, just keep your prices here. Everyone mm -hmm. will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, do, I do my best for that. Um, of and course. It, you know, it's a tricky thing for me because I really believe that women should be paid for their work. And I've never asked a producer to lower her price or give me a discount um, because I believe women should be paid for their work. So it's it's a balance of respecting that value and then also respecting the value that I hold about um, feeling like the wine is you know worth more than what people pay for it. Yeah, I want them to feel like it's it's that good. They would have been okay with paying more. And right, and these natural wines are less inclined to give people a headache. So yeah, that's always good as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's. I mean, I'm. I, I can't make any health claims. I can share anecdotal um, stories, though, from Our lots of customers. Yeah, lots mm -hmm. and lots of customers that find that when they're drinking organic wines. Um, they have a completely different experience with how they feel the next day after they've had a glass or two. Right. Shelly yeah. Webb, did you know what you just did? No. Do you know what our CDA gourmet wine word Gourmet of the week, week is? is? I can't pronounce that. <laughs> no. What is it? I, I, I didn't do that. It's natural wine. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I, I toyed with in your own name. yeah the uh That's french word for female winemaker i, I mm -hmm. it's on our note it's really as yep. the wine word of the week um i'm sorry mm -hmm. uh on your notes Marilee, does it say natural wine is the wine words of the week yes yeah so i gave shelly a a bad a bad uh set of notes shame on me 
Uh, mm -hmm. But we are going to talk about that one as well. But yeah, the CDA Gourmet Wine Words of the Week is natural wine. So we have a little definition down, but Mary Lee, I would love for you to educate us all on the correct and uh, real life definition as you know it. Oh, I love this question. It's so much fun because um, it's a topic that, you know, we could, I'm sure the three of us with a bottle or two of wine could sit around for hours talking about it because there is no, you know, accepted definition of natural wine worldwide. So um, the way that I look at it is nothing added, nothing taken away. That's the strictest definition of it, in my opinion. So every, you know, everything in the vineyard is done organically or biodynamically. And then in the cellar and the winemaking process, you're not adding anything or taking anything away from a filtration and finding a filtration perspective. So indigenous yeast fermentations, um, just letting the wine. I mean, there's a couple producers I work with specifically in France. There's two that just their faces pop up in my mind when I talk about um, natural wine, because th what they say to me and the word that they use in French is surveiller, which means they're monitoring. They're, I mean, the way I think of it is they're surveying. So they're, they're not doing anything. And sometimes that's the hardest thing is to not do something. Mm -hmm. They're just paying attention. They're monitoring, paying attention to what's going on it, through the fermentation, through, vin through the vinification process. But they're not adding anything to make the wine taste a certain way or look a certain way or smell a certain way. Um, they're just, you know, working with what that particular vintage Game. Watching yeah. nature take its course. Beautifully put. Yes. Yeah. Beautifully put. Try not to get in the way. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, it, I mean, we call ours naturally made because, you know, there's a spectrum and it's really hard to find absolute, you know, purity. We definitely have some that meet that nothing added, nothing taken away um, definition. But for me, naturally made is you're farming organically, or if you're not certified, then you're practicing, you're at least practicing some kind of sustainable viticulture. Um, and you're, the, the seller is low intervention, the, you know, you're just doing as little as possible to the wine. So, and for me, I'm looking for that organic certification, if I can get it, um, or, you know, it's part of visiting is seeing what's going on. Um, and I know that there, there are a lot of producers that they're small, and they they don't have a lot of time or money and organic certification is it can be costly and it's, it's co really costly in terms of time um which can be difficult for for a lot of these women and you know many of them um are moms in addition to um being wine growers there they have young kids and that takes up a lot of time too so what is yeah. it it's a claret uh bordeaux brand uh, bordeaux blend with the certification that it's a claret you pay a lot of money to get that word on there uh, mm -hmm. just make a bordeaux blend and make it really good so you don't have to do all that it's the same with organically or certified organic uh why don't you just do it <laughs> it's uh -huh. better practices anyway and yeah. you let people know yeah we can't put that on the label but we are and we take a lot of pride in that uh right. I, I just think that's super, super important. There are the grapes in this Sangiovese, Marzamino, and Barbera. And and, mm -hmm. Ropello. Mm -hmm. and don't forget Gropello. Gropello is the one that's, um, it's really, that's an important grape because it's native to that particular area on Lake Garda where this wine is grown. And, you know, it's an interesting wine because it's a field blend. These um these vines are all living together in the vineyard and it's ah. the last time I was there was um, earlier this year in the springtime. And it was so fun to see um, the different stages of bud break happening. You know, some of the vines wake up from their winter dormancy earlier than others. And um, just it's the vineyard is beautiful in that it it's been an organic vineyard for you know, a long, long time. And it, there's a sense of life and vibrancy and, um it's a very tranquil place as well wildflowers growing and um you know bees buzzing around birds Yay, that's bees. awesome when <laughs> yeah. you say field blend are they harvesting and putting it in the hopper all together they're co-planted so yes they do 
Oh, and that is fantastic. So, I mean, you don't really know the makeup of this, right? but right. you know the varietals that are in it. Exactly. That's and what I love is they're, you know, they're all um, native Italian grapes. I mean, I can get going talking about the native grapes of Italy for a long time, <laughs> but I'll just keep this one short. The other thing I love about this wine is it's, um, there's where, you know, we know that 2000 years ago, the Romans loved their wine everywhere. They, you know, everywhere they conquered, they took the vine with them. And through the, that process of conquering and taking the vine, they found two places that they identified as wonderful places to make rosé. One of them is Provence mm -hmm. and the other is um, Lake Garda. And that's where this, this Chiretto has the, a great tradition of um, rosé that has you know started a long, long time ago. Um, so yeah, it's a fun, super fun um, rosé. My notes say that this beautiful rosé can pair with almost any dish from pad thai to grana padano cheese. Yeah. That's fun. This is, you know what else it's really good with is hummus. And, you know, oh, like plant-based dips, if you're doing, um, you know, like an appetizer thing, whether it's holiday time or not, if you're just having guests over for dinner or, you know, sometimes um, my husband and I, what we like to do on a Friday night is we have a picnic dinner and, you know, we'll have, you know, some cheese and charcuterie and we'll probably have some hummus and maybe some, you know, some other, maybe tzatziki or something. Usually hummus is what we have and vegetables. And this is fabulous. It works so well. Yeah. Sounds like a fun tradition. Oh, I, we it, need to do that. Too. Yeah. You know, there, <laughs> there are those stories again. Uh, tradition is a great thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And when you lock in on the, you don't have to do everything the same all around every, every time you tweak it up, but it's that yeah. core tradition, right? Yeah. So much fun. So mm -hmm. much fun. Uh, yeah. We're going to take one more break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we are going to, uh, open up a red, Marilee. I'm so excited for you to taste this. I'm, 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 open it, I'm open super it now excited. And get it in your glass quick and swirl it around. So we will do that. And, uh, Sorry. we'll be back in a moment. Yes. Uh, welcome back to Wine Time Fridays with Shelly and Phil and Marilee Bramhall with Iola Wines. That deserves an exclamation point. Oh, perfect timing. So we are going to do a rinse pour on this, especially now the rinse pour that I normally do. I will I will just drink it. <laughs> but because we have our fabulous Wine Time Fridays spit bucket. Dump. dump bucket. I'm going to do that. And we're not yeah. turning it into cold duck. <laughs> no, we're not. No, that's just wrong on so many levels. Uh, there's so many. Oh, look at that pour. Look at the that's color. Giant pour. Uh, what we have is a 2018 Gratis Padere I Valoni Nebbiolo. I got the Nebbiolo right. <laughs> yep. Yep. There's another grape in there too. Really? It's 15% Vespolina. 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 So that's another native grape. Um, Nebbiolo, we know, is native to the northern part of Italy. But there's a little bit of, a, let's just say some, well, let's say this. There's a lot of research going on right now to narrow down um, where Nebbiolo was actually born. Was it in the Longue, in, you know, Barolo and Barbaresco country, or was it actually over in Lombardia in, um, in the northern part in Valtellina? In Valtellina, the, the Nebbiolos are, it's Nebbiolos known as Chiavanesca, and it's, um, they're different. They're very pure and, and volcanic soil there, and it's, a, it's, if you haven't been there, you gotta go. Um, so it, there, there's a lot of reason to think that, that Nebbiolo is actually native to, to Valtellina and Lombardia and not to the Longue. So, um, mm. but all of that to say this wine doesn't come from either of those places. It comes <laughs> from Alto, it comes from Alto Pimonte. Um, and it's from an area, um, the, the, the more well-known DOC up there is Boca. And, um, this one comes from a DOC called Coline Novresi, which is right 
next to Boca. And um, the producer, Anna Sertorio, is um, just one of my favorite producers to work with. She's such a, what a story and such a star. She, um, lots of just guts, absolute guts. I mean, she she was in a five generation law practice with her dad and, um, wow. and, and he died in 2011 and she had to decide would she continue the law practice or would she can continue Poderi Avaloni. And um, she had young kids at the time. It was a real tough decision. And she uh, of course chose Poderi Avaloni to continue um, that. So she started with a consulting enologist and a consulting agronomist. And after the first vintage, she told um, she told the agronomist that she wanted to convert to organic. And he told her that was just ridiculous. Like <laughs> what a big mistake that would be. What are you thinking? <laughs> exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. And so yeah, those are the best ones to say, I'm thinking this, I'm going to do it. And I'm going <laughs> to kill it. That's, and that's exactly what she's done. She fired him and promptly started converting to organic. And now she is working with UNESCO to doing a study on how to increase butterfly habitat in the vineyard. Nice. Wow. Nice. That's Anna amazing. is like, you just can't help but fall in love with her and this place. So this is a very naturally made wine, um, indigenous yeast fermentation, and it's called Gratus. And um, they call it Gratus um, for a few reasons. There's um, a lot of local history about um, a saint in the area. The other thing, the other reason, the big reason um, is because about 245 million years ago, where she lives is, was the Valsesia volcano, and it imploded. And it shot out all these, what she calls bombs, <laughs> um, which are these giant rocks and these big, I mean, there's these huge stones all over her property. So this is grown in volcanic soil. So this is um, exciting to see Nebbiolo, how it expresses in volcanic soil versus what we have in the Longay. And, and then Vespolina is actually related to Nebbiolo. So her belief is that they make very good blending partners. And, you know, we know that Nebbiolo and the Longay is, that's got to age for a while before mm -hmm. you can, you know, tolerate it. Think, um, think, think of your Barolos, right? Exactly. You yeah. want to lay those yeah. down a whole long time. Yeah. And same with Barbarescos. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This Now, the, the exciting thing about Anna's wines, um, her, she makes a Boca DOC that, that I sell. It's a, it's an expensive wine for us. It's about 50, around 50, 48 or 50 a bottle. Um, and the one that, that we're selling is a 2012 or 13. So, you know, it's already got 10 years on it and it's yeah. going to, it's got 20 more to go easily. It's, you can drink it now or you can keep it for another 20 years easily. Um, I love Gratus because of its complexity and, um, because of the savory elements that, that show up in this wine. Um, every time I, and I've got, um, customers that absolutely love this wine too. I mean, I, people will buy this, you know, six or 12 at a time because it's, um, it's delicious and interesting. And, um, it's an interesting Italian red wine. I find well, what, what, what did two of you think of it? I'm about to taste it. <laughs> we can't taste till we toast to Anna and hashtag cheersing. Oh, that was. Safe. I wish I had a glass of that. I really I do. Know. <laughs> I know. I have to rely on you to tell me what I'm missing. It's five years old. It could still lay down. A long time. A <laughs> long time. It's delicious. Yeah. I, I'm getting dark, uh, dark fruit, dark raspberry, yeah. black cherry, things like that. Um, yeah. A little. Little, little, I'm not good at this stuff, but a little, little pepper mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> is what I'm getting. Again, I'm not good at that at white all. White pepper. I didn't yeah. say white pepper. Oh, that's an excellent, um, Shelly, that is an excellent call. If, if Anna was sitting here, she would tell you white pepper. Yay. Yay, Shelly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, and I it just, is like on the finish, if you sit with that wine and just to contemplate it for a moment on the finish, you will you will taste the white pepper. And I, I get a little anise in there too. Yes. Yeah. It, there's I do too. Um there's a, a nice sort of a licorice herbal element mm. to it. Mm -hmm. Um and then once it's in the glass for a while, it's you get into you know more a little bit more savory, like more of the leather savory yeah. elements like that. Mm -hmm. 
It's mm -hmm. just fun to see how wines evolve, even in a short period of time out of the glass. Um, this uh, rosé uh, had a very long finish. Actually, yeah. all of these had beautiful finishes that just stayed with you. They're, they're not in, down, and done. They are mm -hmm. kind of staying with you a little bit. And I'm still, I've still got a little bit of this on the back sides of my tongue. So mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah, it's which absolutely delicious. The Italians would tell you that that is the sapidity. Sapidity? Uh, sapidity. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a cute word. I like it. Yeah, maybe that could be the wine word sometimes. Sapidity. <laughs> we yeah, so you know, it is. when, that, when I edit these, I, I, I'm, because I listen to these, the audio all the way through and this is the little thing and mm -hmm. I'll just go, there it is. And I'll mm -hmm. put it down in my little uh, wine word of the week notes because you have to be organized on this stuff, Marilee. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so this is always good because, you know, you only have so many words you can use. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, what is, you've done like almost 200 episodes. So. This is episode 188, but we've only done the wine word of the week for probably maybe 120 Maybe only. something like that. That's, yeah. that's a lot of wine words, though. That's pretty cool. It is. I've had listeners say, you know, you can repeat the wine words. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's true. You could. Uh, mm -hmm. yes. Thanks, Nicole, for that little uh, vote of confidence mm -hmm. on repeating words. Yeah. She'll like this. She's not listening to as many of our episodes because she's only drinking wine on Sundays. Not sure what <laughs> got into her. Um, yeah. Something about no sugar, low sugar, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so, Marilee, right now you are working with winemakers from Italy and France only. Yes. Are you yes. maybe going to expand somewhere else? Yes, eventually that is the goal. But from a logistics perspective right now, Italy and France is about all we can handle. But I'll tell you the place that I really would like to, I, I, the new world is not where my heart is. I mean, I, I spent about a decade working in the business here in um, Washington and California earlier in my career and before I was swept away to the old world and um, the, the excitement of things like native grapes and where grapes were born and where they first you know, appeared on the planet and how, how they express themselves in their native terroir. I feel um, like I know what country you're going to mention, so I can't wait. Uh, Wines from where? Well, this is technically considered New World, but I don't really lump them in there. I think they're kind of they're kind of in the middle. It's South Africa. I knew uh, you were going to say that. <laughs> I, I was thinking Argentina, and then I'm like, no, it's going to be Spain. No, South Africa. South Africa. There's a lot of of dry farming and now yeah. 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 Yep. I feel like Shelly has me figured out. <laughs> Dryland farming, organic, conscientious viticulture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and, be... and... Oh, here's the map. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, wow. What a beautiful map. You already have it framed. Did they give it to you framed? Yes. How nice of them, right? I was shocked. <laughs> Wow, that's a beautiful thing to give. I know it's amazing and to receive, right? Uh, so both, both parts of that. We're going to get that hung up back yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wanted to. This is fantastic, by the mm -hmm. way. All all of these wines are really really good. Um, I feel like I want to try to sneak this in before I forget uh, the whole reason that we're even talking with Mary Lee is it because our friend Deanna said, Phil, you need to talk to Mary Lee and what she's doing, which I'm like, twist my arm. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to give a shout out not only to Deanna, but her daughter, Paige, who turned six years old two weeks ago today. <laughs> Happy birthday, belated Paige. Wine Time Friday's birthday wish. You're, you can't have wine yet, but maybe three, four yeah. years you'll get sips because but your mom can. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that uh, there is a lot going on that day. So happy birthday, Paige. A couple of weeks late. Thank you, Deanna. Uh, real quick, we have had some wines this week. Badger Mountain Merlot. That was a, or, um, a certified organic wine. Mm -hmm. uh, you got that one, didn't you? I think so. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I 
felt like we needed to have this wine when we had Marilyn. Sunny with the chance of flowers Chardonnay. <laughs> That's a cute name. The name itself. Name is a cute name. And it wasn't a bad Chardonnay. Uh, Panetti, Note, Zinfandel. We had a Kim Crawford Illuminate Roseo, um, Rose. I guess that's. And then uh, Elsom Sellers Mavedra, which may still be my favorite wine that Jody makes. Is Mavedra. That, the Ma Mavedra. Mavedra. It's so freaking good. And she doesn't sell that to the public. It's only to her wine club. Ah, so speaking of wine clubs. Yeah, speaking of wine clubs. You want clubs, to hear about your wine clubs. Uh, there are different clubs. Yeah, there's a few options for people that, you know, if, if <laughs> they're excited about women and wine. And, um, you know, I like to say to people that Iola Wines is not just about women. It's about exceptional wine. And these women are making damn good wine. I feel like that's what you've experienced today. I yeah, hope that yeah. you... Yeah. you um feel like that's what you've experienced mm -hmm. so our clubs are um they're a lot of fun um the one that's there's a couple that are super popular the connoisseur club is is our most popular club and it's because it's got a little of everything you get some red you get some white wines you get some rosé every once in a while um and then i i like i love sparkling wine so there's there's always some sparkling wine that turns up there um like our november allocation we did a um Cruazé from Lombardia, from Ultra Po Pavese, which is an area known for extraordinary Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, um, and particularly for sparkling. So this is a sparkling rosé that went out in November, and that's just going to be, you know, that was another one I wanted to send to you because it's just wonderful for holiday food. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so the Connoisseur Club gives, you know, a, a nice, um, you know, kind of a little bit of everything. And then we have a Club Rouge for the red wine lovers out there. Um, sparkling Club for the sparkling lovers out there, which is, includes me. And our Sparkling Club is nice because it's only eight bottles a year. So yeah. you just get two allocations of four bottles each. And a lot of people like to do that. It's just sort of an add-on. Like if they do our Petit Rouge, which is only 16 bottles a year, and then they'll add the sparkling to it. And um, and this time of year is the perfect time to be having sparkling. You know, and this year... Mm -hmm. Because I've met so many amazing women in um, Champagne in the past eighteen months, um, the Sparkling Club is all Champagne. Okay, got and, it. I was going to ask yeah. if you had yeah. some sparklers that weren't Champagnes. I, um, I mean, I have a, a lot of. Um, I, I just absolutely love some of the beautiful um, traditional method sparkling wines made in Italy. There's some incredibly good. Um, you know where they're riddling by hand and the, the, everything's really being done yes yeah and i mean i I've, I've sold these wines and sold them out um because they're so good and there's a wonderful um element of value there where you're not you know you're getting something that's really quite wonderful and you know there's one in particular that we sold that every time i poured it for people they just fall in love and so as a result we're sold out of it and it was a vintage 2015 Corteze from wow. Gavi, Gavi de Gavi, or certified organic, hand riddled. And um, it's, I mean, I think we were selling it for like 36 a bottle. People so, don't understand <laughs> no. the labor behind hand riddling sparkle. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a big know, deal. Talk about carpal tunnel down the road. <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, did I'm curious at the conference that you were. Uh, and talking with some of the uh, sh the, the cham champagne makers, right? The producers were they talking at all about this uh, climate change and how it's affecting the region in Champagne? Because it, it's a real thing right now. Oh, uh, it's a huge thing! All this fun of English, you know, wines and uh, a sparkler from England, <laughs> and yet now they're starting to get those those temperatures and the climate that is. Perfect yeah. for making sparkling wine. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. I would love to hear if you had any of those conversations. Although we have, well, I will, I will tell you. We have one oh, more pardon, club. I missed something. Oh, so I, I just said we skipped over one of your wine clubs, but we'll go. Back. Oh yeah, we did. We skipped over the Lumiere Club, which is for the people that love white wine. I mean, when I started Iola, I did not have a white wine club, and I just people kept asking, well, "What about what about a white wine club?" And so. Here we, we have a white wine club now, and it's Lumiere. It's, I love it. Lumiere, yeah. And I picked that name, you know, obviously because it makes you think of something pale, but it's also 
or, you know, something light, but it's also, you know, people that are enlightened. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I feel like the, the enlightened um, wine drinker also enjoys white wine. Oh, yeah. you're absolutely correct about that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah so that's those are the clubs i mean um connoisseur and and club rouge both are 24 bottles a year so four times a year you get six bottles in each one that for connoisseur and club rouge they actually also get a recipe from one of the producers so nice. i don't you know just find recipes and put them in so um like in september when gratus went out to our club members um they got a recipe from anna and it's anna's um gratus risotto so um, mm -hmm. the producers send me their their um, their recipes, and it's pretty funny, you know, because they're all in grams or oh, yeah. you know, milliliters. So I have to, I make the recipe first to you know make sure I can <laughs> convert it um, sure. and have it come out, uh, and then send it out to the club members. And it's been really Again, fun to share. Um, tough job, producers. right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, uh, one of our friends who was a sponsor today, the CD Gourmet. Uh, they put a recipe out every Friday on their Facebook page and uh, it coincides real well with their uh, gourmet kitchen store and it's Olivelli uh, vinegars and oils among other Ooh. things and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a whole lot of fun mm -hmm. because I, you know, this Shelly and our listeners do, I am not a foodie, uh, but mm -hmm. getting into wine, I have a much greater pr appreciation for the, the pairing of food and wine it's just so um, it's un, it's really undescribable for me when you get that perfect match mm -hmm. I, I make noises i shouldn't make in front of people <laughs> and, but that's great though that means i mean then see when i talk to people about food and wine pairing i you know what i talk about is it's about hedonism you have to be willing to embrace hedonism that's what we're after we want yeah, you know <laughs> you know as we want to make it as great as possible and the idea is that the the wine and food make each other better right so yep. yeah mm -hmm. right so back to climate change <laughs> back to climate change yes so this week you know was um i'm gonna say it was uh a rather festive atmosphere so not mm -hmm. a lot of serious conversation happening okay. but i've had a lot of those conversations with my producers in champagne mm -hmm. so champagne is a place i go pretty regularly. It's, it usually ends up being a couple of times a year I'm in Champagne. I'm sorry. And <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, yeah, I mean, what's happening now is I have customers asking, you know, will you take, will you take me? Can, can <laughs> me and my friends come along with you? By the way, um, why not do an excursion? <laughs> yeah. It, it'll, do an it'll, Iola wine excursion. We've got room for eight and we're going to go and, and you still can get work done when you're over there, but not uh, as much. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe not, not, when I, not when I have guests. The guests yeah. are my first priority, and, sure, and sure. I've been doing I've been doing some food and wine tours with um, a great friend of mine in the Seattle area who's a chef, and um, so our our backgrounds complement really nicely. And um, and she's also been leading tours for the last ten years or so. So yeah, she's cool. been hiring me to come on as the wine educator for the week, and um, and we're um, this year we're in June we're going to Provence. And we'll be doing some, you know, visits to producers of mine, um, having meals with them, going through tasting through all of their wines with a, with paired meals, and um, and then some other, you know, just low key picnics uh, in the vineyards, things like that. But, Where which yeah. restaurant is she a chef at? Let's give her a shout out. Oh, she's not. She's not a chef at a restaurant. Okay. Um, she is. I mean, when I call her a chef, she's always, you know, she doesn't like to have a lot of. Um, too much you know she's very modest let's put it yeah, that yeah. way sure. she's very accomplished and very modest and she wrote a cookbook during covid which is full of um mainly italian but also some french recipes too and they are um fabulous this is one of my favorite cookbooks i use it regularly her name's kelly sam doritas and um her company is called poji bonesy and it's named after the village in tuscany look below in the show notes there is a link to that book oh that's fantastic yeah thank you for that yeah thank she's that. delightful and then um like i said we're we're taking a group to we still have a um spots left on this provence tour no nice. i want to go to provence that Maybe would your be... listeners want to go to provence with me um there's a chance to do that in june that's fantastic uh well 
we we didn't really get the final answer on the climate change conversation, but well, we know I you've was had wondering, it. I was wondering, though, will England, if they do start making some sparkling wines, I wonder, will they use the method champenois? <laughs> Yes, I, I'm going to say yes. I know there's would, some yeah. um, a good amount of sparkling wine production going on, and I think it's in in um, England, and I think it will continue to expand as we're dealing with climate change. I mean, for example, I can give you um, a, a quick sort of um, vintage review of the 2023 vintage in Champagne, if that yeah. would be of interest. Yes, um, yeah. and it relates specifically to, to climate change. So what happened, sadly, this early year, harvest in well, what happened is right before harvest, they had a very warm phase, like a heat wave. And as a result, um, when you get over 95 degrees, photosynthesis stops and the vine shuts down. And that's what happened. So the grapes, many of the grapes did not ripen. So, and then they rotted. And if you're farming organically, then you're going to lose a lot of your crop. If you don't, you spray and you don't have any of these problems and you just, you know, there's chemicals. I believe that there's chemicals in the in the wine and I don't like to drink it for that reason. Yeah. Um, but the, I mean, every producer I visited lost, you know, some of them are losing 75% of their harvest oh in 2023. God. Yeah, and I mean, it was really heartbreaking to be going through the vineyards and there's just, you know, they just cut the grapes and leave them on the ground. And um, it just smells like vinegar. It just smelled like vinegar. It was really, I think, you know, when that happens, I come from a farming family and I I know about farming and and that being a farmer can be like living on the knife's edge because Mm -hmm. you're, and you know, my family does dry land farming and um, you know, you're relying on the weather and it's the same thing, you know, certainly in Champagne and all over France and Italy, there's very little irrigation allowed. A lot of people don't realize that um, because there's so much irrigation in America, they re- they just think that irrigation is part of wine growing, and it's it's not in the old world. It's very unusual to be well, um, for I irrigation to be allowed. I think in many farms, irrigation is necessary. In vineyards, uh, <laughs> to your yeah. point, the make those make those vines really really work to get that yeah. water, and it's really count- and they will. They will. Yeah, they will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we were in Paso, we found out some of those roots were 30 feet down. Yes. And that's, it still blows me away, right? It's yeah. very contraindicated to me mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it's like you, basically you three press, yards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Three so meters. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's again fascinating about the, the world of wine. Um, yes. Nothing. <laughs> you want to talk about what's coming up in the future? Oh. Since we've got one more time to mention. Uh, Pinot Men- Menor. <laughs> Not Menor. <laughs> I can never say it. Meunier. Thank you. Meunier. I don't see where Pinot Menor is. It's coming up. I it, see it now. coming up. Is it the 16th? It is the 16th of December. Yes. Of December. Yes. Oh, yes. I love Meunier. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. National Cabernet Front Day is 12 4. Yep. National Prohibition Repeal Day. We are December going to 5th. talk about that. Yes. Um, World Asi Day. Yeah. Do you know what Asu, um, Asu wine is? No. It's got oh. Botrytis, Novel Rot. You're talking about the grapes flying off and, and rotting, which I think ultimately would be good for the compost and natural aspect of it. But yeah. uh, the, the noble rot really uh, is something that gets a bad name. But on, on that no, wine, it's it, actually, a, it, it needs that. And it's, it's sweet. We probably it's, won't be having any. Just like Sauterne. Like Sauterne, Sauterne yeah. Exactly. Just like Sauterne, um, yeah, the um, noble rot is the noble form of gray rot. It's not gray rot, it's noble. It is noble. Noble gray rot. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, as you mentioned, the 16th. Pinot, Pinot yeah, Meunier. Meunier, we pretty much just call it Meunier now. Probably still, they probably still have it listed as Pinot Meunier, but That's Champagne uh, well, they call it Meunier. When we have guests Meunier. and they say, uh, I say, what would you like? And do you have any Pinot? Yes, I pour a Pinot Noir. I'm like, no, I'm looking for Pinot Gris. I'm like, no, don't have that. Uh, <laughs> not that there's not good Pinot Gris out there. Just oh my drink. goodness, all sauce. Phil. Yes, Boy. right. There's I have met a woman in Alsace that oh, can't wait for those wines to get here. 
Is that a start of a song? I met a woman in Alsace. <laughs> well, if it's not, it ought to be, right? It should be. Um, mm -hmm. Next week, we have a whole lot going on. We have no guests next week. It's which is okay. Like We're going to take meeting. a breath. It's a business <laughs> meeting. Yes. We're opening a Cabernet Franc for in honor of Cabernet Franc Day. And we have a number of them that we can choose from. We have a Cabernet Sauvignon, which we will open from the winner, Shelly, of the Apple Cup, mm -hmm. which is going to be passing time wines because the Huskies are going to beat the Cougs. But uh, if the Cougs happen know. to upset the Huskies, we do have a little Bledsoe family winery or double back wine. Just in case the unfathomable ha happens, am I right, Marilee? The Huskies go dogs. I think so. I'm going to have to say go dogs. Yeah, I mean, I did not go to the University of Washington. I went to Seattle U, but I was a, a big, oh. um, I was Seattle a big U. Husky football fan in those days. Absolutely. Um, Seattle U, the uh, no, that's UP, uh, USP, University of Puget Sound. What is Seattle U's uh, mascot. I forgot. They're because they yes, they've changed it. Um, yeah, R Red Riders. Red Riders. Something like something that. Yeah, like it used that. to be it used to be the Chieftains when I was there. But yeah, way know. back. Oh my gosh, that's right. Way then they back. went through a huge hiatus of no sports, and now they have sports again. So. Uh, yeah. Seattle U. Well, it's right down the street from where you live. So there you go. It is. It's funny that I ended up um, <laughs> living not that far from. Yeah. Me. Yeah. I didn't go. I didn't. Yeah. I, I travel, but I always come back home to Seattle. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I followed a girl to Coeur d'Alene and I haven't been back to Seattle since. Well, you've been back to visit. Uh, I've been back to visit. Yes. Uh, tomorrow is the Apple Cup game. Just let. And then next week, we're also having another installment of our Wine Time Fridays. Charity Sips, A Toast to Good Deeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marilee, you have done a good deed today by oh, hanging wow. with okay. us. And sending us wine. And sending us <laughs> wine. That was a very good deed. <laughs> yes. Uh, maybe it was three good deeds. Three good we're, deeds. We'll go one for each, good A good deed for each bottle. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, so thank you for that. Thank you for being a guest. By the way, uh, when you pour a really good glass of wine... And someone says, man, the, the winemaker really had it going on. I think he knows what he's doing. And Mary Lee can go, yeah, you got she most did. of that right, but it's not a he. And uh, the beauty behind this is that we're pouring absolutely quality, outstanding wines. Again, this, this red wine that we had, $34. I'm sorry. This is unbelievable uh wine for the price point is fantastic and to your point this could be easily double in price yeah. and and it would it would hold up mm -hmm. yes so, i agree and then you hello mm -hmm. and then you find out that it's a female wine maker and it just cuts through all those barriers and stereotypes and all of that stuff because uh they shouldn't be there to begin with and so thank you so much for what you're doing to help uh, continually evolve women in wine. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for bringing in quality wines as well and being with us today. It is such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for um, wanting to know the story of Iola and wanting to share it. I really appreciate it. And if um, people have questions, they're always welcome to get in touch with me. It's easy to find me on Instagram at Iola Wines, or you can just shoot an email to hello at Iola Wines. Or if you're all in and you love what this is about, then join one of our clubs. Perfect. And you have options over those clubs as well. Yeah. We're linking below. And we are linking below to all of the above. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Oh, that one's uh, cool. I like that. <laughs> I have my moments, uh, if not accidentally. A uh, huge thanks to today's sponsors, Seven Sellers and Elsom Sellers. And Shelly, with a little bit of knowledge, wine becomes a lot less overwhelming. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Marilee. Have an awesome weekend. We'll see you next week to open a Passing Time Wine and a Cabernet Franc. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Thank you for spending part of your day to wind down with Shelly and Phil. Remember, you can listen to any episode of the Wine Time Fridays podcast by visiting winetimefridays.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And join us on our Wine Time Fridays Facebook page, Instagram, or on Twitter, which is at Vintage Tweets, for daily conversation. Until next week, here's our toast to you. To health, wealth, abundance, gratitude, peace on earth, and of course, romance.